My wife has been very patiently asking every few months for me to build her a little library. I knew it was going to be placed inside so it didn't need to be waterproof and it doesn't need a door. I won an experiment with India ink on ash and I got to do that with this project. So I really enjoyed that. I built a cleat for the back so it could hang from the wall or it can sit on a countertop. I enjoyed the process. I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for watching. To get started for the carcass of this little library, I ripped the material I'm using to width and then I cut it down on the chop saw to length. This is the material I'm going to make the back of the little library out of. And I'm just going to reference my double square and cut the dado out the same thickness. I have a temporary fence set up so I don't cut my real fence. I'm going to use this guy. With the double square set at the same thickness as the back panel, I can use that to measure how thick I want the dado to be in the bottom piece. That way, when I slide the bottom piece into this dados I already cut into the side, it all fits together into a nice square box. I wasn't sure what angle I wanted the top to be at, so I just took a straight piece of plywood and figured it out. After marking the lines, I just used a track saw to make the cut. To easily make the same cut on the second side, I used the first side and traced the line and then made the cut. So I don't want the top to be flush because I'm going to put a French cleat on the back to hang it. Thinking about cutting the top at an angle to make it flush against the wall once I have the French cleat back here. In order to find that angle, I put a piece of scrap wood here and then just drew a line in my square to find that angle. And then if I cut it there, this will set up against the wall and hide the French cleat in the back. So getting started on the trim, I needed to resaw this piece of ash and a few others. Later that evening. I definitely need to upgrade my bandsaw for any type of resawing. To finish getting these pieces of ash ready to be trim, I ran them through the planer to make the face nice and smooth. I contemplated a few ways of supporting the shelf, either using shelf pins or dominoes, but I just kind of kept it simple. I made those shelf brackets and screwed them into the side of the box. Instead of bringing this shelf support bracket out all the way, I'm going to cut this piece in half, not waste any wood, and I'm not going to have any support right here, but it's going to only help hide the shelf and the bracket. The supports are going to be hidden, but they don't need these little edges, so they're going to come off. To make sure each support bracket was at the same height, I used a piece of scrap and cut it to the height that I wanted, so that way I could just use that to reference off on both sides. These spring tools are pretty cool. I use mine all the time to mark out where my drill bit needs to go. I definitely did not want to drill holes all the way through the set. So these are the pieces of trim for the front right of the library. I have this cut at an angle, this cut at an angle. I think I'm going to pre-glue them like so, and then I can stain them with the India ink and attach them to the box. So front, side, angle cut, Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Mark the angle here. I'm just going to reference it against the top of the line. Then on my miter saw, I'm going to do my best to replicate that same line. So I'm going to get one more coat of paint on this. Show my temporary spray booth. Some plywood strips on the ceiling to make different size booths. Get a little spraying in in the garage without getting all the bugs. Just use the painter's plastic. The India ink almost has a consistency of water, so I just brush it on with a foam brush. It showcases the grain really nice, but makes the wood black. Mm -hmm. 
the India ink dries really fast, something like 20 minutes. Afterwards, I sprayed it with some Rattle Can Minwax Lacquer. Once that dried, I started putting this thing together. I started with the shelf. If you keep hearing what sounds like chipmunks in the background, those are definitely my two little girls. They never stop talking. They won't stop. They're never going to stop. Getting some of this trim put on made me really happy with how my design turned out. I really like the color contrast with the India ink on the ash and the white paint. If you're not familiar with how a French cleat works, it's usually two pieces of plywood with a 45 cut in them. That way they can lock together and hold nice and tight. The plywood cleat is three quarters inch ply and this is just a piece of the same ply as a spacer to go on the bottom. Then back to the trim. So the way I do these miters is I put the edge trim on first and then I do the front and I just trim it very slightly until it matches up on both sides. This one's still got a little bit to get trimmed off before it fits. I really wanted to put as few nail holes in this as I could. Most of it was just glued and clamped on. A few spots I needed nails to make that easier. For the last few pieces of trim, I just used the reference method. I marked about where it would line up. I left it a little long and then slowly trimmed it down until it fit. My wife had been asking me to build this for her for quite a while and I kind of surprised her with it. I told her I was working on it, but I didn't tell her what it was going to look like or when it was going to be finished. <laughs> 